Good afternoon. You are welcome at St. Philip Benizi Catholic Church. We are delighted that you are here with us to worship, in person or online. You are a vital part of our community, and you are loved. Please use the worship aids provided to participate fully, actively, and consciously during the Mass. At this time, we ask that you silence all cell phones and digital devices so that you do not disturb the Mass. Thank you. Please stand, greet one another, and join in singing our gathering hymn. We begin our Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. The merciful love of the Lord fills the earth. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. Yeah, we are still in the season of Easter, so we are, uh, we'll be singing Alleluia for a while, or saying it. And as we begin our Mass today, um, the sprinkling of the blessed water will uh, replace the ordinary uh, uh, ritual of, uh, of the penitential rite. Lord our God, you made water the instrument of your mercy. Through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupt nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory, glory to God in the highest, glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory, glory to God in the highest, glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God. God in the highest, glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God. Lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A 
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made for you, and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a bank. face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my part to hold. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death and and mercy follow me all the days 
from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He bore, he himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. You know my lips and all my heart. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice, as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven all out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure's speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go to find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter 
and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, everyone. We just uh, heard the gospel today, and uh, Jesus is uh, using kind of ordinary uh, figures of speech uh, to always convey uh, a particular message. And uh, this time is. Uh, using uh, these two metaphors and is proclaiming himself, I am the shepherd, right? And then again, that I am the gate. So, this Sunday, the fourth Sunday in the Easter season is uh, commonly, commonly known as uh, the Good Shepherd Sunday. So, um, it's interesting, and some kind of uh, also, we see ambiguity here, if that's the way you pronounce uh, the English, ambiguity. I know in my language it sounds the same, but probably the pronunciation is different. Uh, uh, we see Jesus like he's the shepherd, and at the same time the gate. Make up your mind, Jesus. Make up your mind. So... We have to go back to the, the context, and always when we read about uh, uh, Jesus' word, we have to go uh, into the root of, uh, of, um, of these two metaphors. And we know that it was a, a common practice that um, shepherds um, talk to their sheep. They have nothing to do, just shepherd the sheep, right? So they would talk to them so that the they become uh, familiar, and uh, the sheep will become familiar with the shepherd's voice as um, the shepherd le led them through various um, area of pastures. At night, shepherds would bring their sheep together within the secure gates, thus for safety reason. And in the morning, each shepherd would then call to his sheep, and because they know the shepherd, their shepherd's voice, the sheep would follow their, their own shepherds and not others. So the, que the first question for each one of us to ask ourselves today is, do I know the voice of my shepherd? Have I become so familiar with his voice that I can clearly distinguish his voice from others? Let's try to imagine the image of several shepherds all calling their sheep at once. It will be a chaos, right? This is an image of the competing voices we encounter in our lives as well. But only one of those voices is the voice of God. Do we know? His voice? Do we know which voice out of so many voices in our head is the voice of God? Or do we become confused with uh, many other impulses or desires or attractions that come, that bring to our attention? So Jesus continues his teaching by saying that he is not only the shepherd, whose voice he know, is known by the sheep, but he is also the gate. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. He calls his own sheep by name. His own reflects the personal nature 
of the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. Shepherding is not just a job for the shepherd, and the sheep are more than an asset. In uh, that culture, people consider a person's name to be more than a simple label to identify that person. They believe that something of the person's identity was tied up in the name, that the name expressed something of the person's essential character. The point of this verse is that the good shepherd knows the sheep with the same kind of intimacy that we have with our friends and beloved ones. It is not worth it that Mary Magdalene recognized the risen Christ only when Jesus calls her by her name, Mary. All of a sudden, the veil is down and recognizes Jesus. What does our Lord mean when he call, calls himself the gate? As the gate... He is the Word of God, revealed to us through His Scriptures. Fidelity to the Word of God is one of the surest ways to the life of grace. And this is what we are doing right now. He is the Word of Truth, as as it is handed down and expounded upon by the teaching of the Church. Fidelity to the authentic teaching of the church, especially when our Pope Francis speaks in union with the bishops, help us navigate the many errors we may find ourselves into, the errors of our age, our times. Jesus is made present to us through the sacraments, which are the door to his grace and the entryway to the food for our spiritual lives. Furthermore, any time our Lord comes to us, through preaching, the witness and teaching of the saints, and the life of prayer within the church, or, or in any other way, we enter the gate and are admitted to his verdant pastures. Jesus is the gate. Not only for the sheep, but for each of the shepherds who lead the sheep in his name. So the invitation is not addressed only to the sheep, but also to the shepherds. And these shepherds are the pastors of the church who have been entrusted with the mission of Christ to lead God's people. Today, if a shepherd of the church fails to preach Jesus Christ, then that shepherd comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. Pastors of the church must humbly listen carefully to these words so that we never fail to shepherd God's people by leading them through the gate, who is Christ himself. We must all be faithful to the tradition of the church, handed on throughout the ages, and not deviate from our pure and holy deposit of faith. If we preach our own gospel or are negligent or misleading in our preaching, then we are not true shepherds. God's true sheep will not recognize the good shepherds. But if we are faithful to all that Jesus has taught, then we will lead the sheep through the gate and become shepherds in union with the heart of the good shepherd. I came, Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Unlike the thief, Jesus is focused on the welfare of the sheep. Coming or going, Jesus' sheep are safe and well fed. They have life and have it abundantly. If we want to experience life at its fullest, we should ask, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus have me to do? How can I be more faithful to Jesus? 
How can I be more like Jesus? As we bring our lives into compliance with Jesus' will, he blesses us with abundant life. That does not necessarily mean health or wealth. It means abundance, which has more to do with what is in our hearts than with what is in our hands. So we should reflect today upon this image of Christ as the Good Shepherd, calling to us in so many varied ways. We must learn his true voice through faith and prayer. That will be the filter that we have at our disposal. We must learn his true voice through prayer and faith. Once we recognize his voice, we will more easily discover him ministering to us, inspiring us, and inviting us to the life of grace by encountering him as the source of way to his new life. And we pray we'll be able to do that. Amen. Let us now profess our faith, and we say, I believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death, he was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this Easter season, this time of gladness, we pray that Jesus, our Good Shepherd, will intercede for us as we pray for all in need. For the church and its leaders, that our faith may deepen, our hope be strengthened, and our love abound as we draw life from Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For peace. That God will guide and give wisdom to all who are working to end warfare or diffuse tension between nations and communities, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For nations and their leaders. That they foster communities which uphold human dignity, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all neophytes, that those who have been newly planted into the body of Christ may continue throughout this Easter season to interpret and live out the mystery and reality of salvation, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For young men and women, 
that God may give them the gift of understanding to discern their service in the church, the priesthood, the accident, consecrated life, marriage, or single life, and for the gift of courage to follow that call. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who are sick or homebound, especially for those whose names we speak out loud. That they will know recovery from illness and relief from pain, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for Winifred Forbes, who we remember in a particular way. Those prayers submitted to our community and for our own needs and intentions. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have died and for those whose names we speak out loud. That they will rejoice in the reward of everlasting life, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. O oh God, you sent your Son as our shepherd. Listen to our prayer, and when we go astray, lead us back to you. Continue to shepherd us on our way to eternal life. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today we have a second collection, and this second collection is for Catholic Home Missions. And there is a little note, explanation note here I would like to say. Home Missions is the name of the, of, for dioceses and parishes in the United States, including its territories and former territories, which cannot provide basic pastoral service to Catholics without outside help. Basic pastoral services include mass and sacraments, religious education, and ministry training for priests, deacons, religious sisters, and lay people. The home missions are dioceses and parishes here in the United States that need the same kind of support. And for the last three, before moving to St. Philip of Benizi, a Catholic church here, I was in the Diocese of Savannah, and from my knowledge, I know that Diocese of Savannah is one of those missions that they receive a lot of help from outside the diocese, because it's, a, it's a one of the diocese's uh, mission. So, thank you for your, whatever support you can give. shepherd there is nothing I shall want fresh and green are the pastures where you give me repose near restful waters you lead me to revive my drooping spirit If you love me, feed my lambs, feed my heart, my voice, my hands. If you love me, feed my sheep, and for my part, I give you the heart of a shepherd. me along the right path. You are 
true to your name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. If you love me, feed my lambs. Be my heart, my voice, my hands. If you love me, feed my sheep. And for my part, I give you. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. now, united as one family, pray together with confidence in the words our Lord Jesus taught us. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Catholics who are not receiving communion today, as well as those of other religious traditions, are invited to come forward in the procession to receive a blessing. Crossing your arms across your chest will indicate to the minister that you wish to receive a blessing. Please join in singing our music for communion found in your worship aid. Touch that soothe sand heals the hurting hands that break a loaf of bread steps that walk beside the weary bearing burdens in their stead see my hands and feet said Jesus love arisen from the grave ones in need of care. Give the homeless warmth and shelter. Christ will find a welcome there. See my hands and feet, said Jesus. Love arisen from the grave. serve without distinction all earth's people first and least know within each act of kindness hope and wholeness of Christ see my hands and feet said Jesus love arisen from the grave That back on little children bind a wound, prepare a meal. Feet that rush to share good tidings, Christ arisen still reveal. See my hands and feet, said 
Jesus, love arisen from the grave. Be my hands and feet, said Jesus. Leave as ones I die to see. Let us pray. One last time. One last time. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I wish you a blessed week. And uh, remember to recognize the right voice, okay? The good shepherd, the one and only Jesus. So that's your task for the coming week. Let us now bow down for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Hallelujah. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. My shepherd is the Lord. For nothing shall I want. Pastures where I'm led to repose, near waters still and deep. God will refresh my soul. I am led onward in ways true to the name. Guide me, O Shepherd of my heart. Lead me homeward through the dark into everlasting day. May my life never part from the shepherd of my heart. Guide me, O shepherd of my heart. Lead me homeward through the dark into everlasting day. Show me the way of truth and light. Keep me always in your Side. May my life never part from the shadow.